Day of surprising scores and outcomes, this one was most surprising. Arkansas losing in Little Rock to Toledo. Despite outgaining the Rockets by almost 200 yards and getting a career-high 412 passing yards from Brandon Allen, the Hogs lost 16-12. Monday, Brett Bielema had to describe what happened. The thing that we took from it on Saturday was uh, we got beat by Toledo, and then you look at it on Sunday, and it was really uh, – I'm not as big stat guy. A lot of times um, I never look at stats at halftime. I never look at anything really than the flow of the game. But then before I go and meet with you guys a lot of time on Saturdays, uh, I'll, I'll look at stats just to see what, what happened. I mean, I, I know that we have big plays, but a lot of times I don't um, zone into who had a big game, who didn't have a big game, tackles especially defensively. And one of the things that jumped out to me right away was the yardage total. And then I I look at the first downs, and I look at time of possession, I look at uh, turnovers, look at penalties. Um, and, and then the penalties, even though they weren't a huge thing, it was 9-8, to eight, I believe, but they were just where the penalties occurred and what happened. And, and that was a textbook definition, in my opinion, of how you lose a football game. Um, obviously, Toledo won it, deserves all the credit in the world. I'm not taking anything away from that at all. Um, uh, but there are a lot of things that we did to ourselves that you just can't have and, and expect to have success. We're, we're not that good of a football team uh, to go out and do certain things and, and, and expect to have success. And a lot of it were the key fundamentals of what we build our program on, our five edges. It was really easy uh, to come up and look at critical areas when we go one for five in the red zone. Um, we're not going to have much success. Unfortunately, you have some injuries. I know you guys got the depth chart. Keon Hatcher, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, having surgery later this afternoon, he'll be out for six weeks uh, at a minimum, um, and and uh, uh, has a have a variety of different opinion uh, options of where that can go. Keon obviously has a red shirt year. And I was sitting with him and Jay Will yesterday. They're both sitting on their little scooters, and can't can't believe that there's two of our premier players are are sitting there with some significant uh, foot injuries. But it is what it is. Um, gives an opportunity for other guys to move forward. Um, so what we did last night, uh, myself, uh, Dan, and, and Mike uh, Michael Smith sat down and. All right, who, who are our best two receivers, you know, for our basic 12-21 groupings? And by far, we thought Jared and, and Drew were our, our best two. So those guys will start at X and Z. And then the guy that we really want to get involved and say, hey, you're getting in the game no more. Hey, what are we going to work him in? How are we going to work it in? Where are we going to put him in? JoJo Robinson will start at a slot for us. Um, so I, I think those three guys right now, and I hit them up and hammered them last night, talked to them both late uh, last night on the phone, just that, hey, you're a starter now. You're a part of this offense. Your responsibility to, to this offense is to know what you're doing, how you fit into it, how to execute it. And, and I think that will be a really good movement. Give a lot of credit to Toledo. They did a lot of movement uh, in, inside. We weren't able to solidify the perimeter to get the ball outside. Um, had weight, you know, obviously uh, – uh, you know, several holding calls that, that uh, not only took the play away, but they also took and negated the yardage, but prevented us from maybe going back to that play because we just couldn't get it on the perimeter. And that, uh, for us, to get the ball outside with success allows us to be able to run the ball inside with more, more, uh, uh, more success as well. So kind of one one hand feeds the other. You know, we do like to come downhill. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I think a, a lot of teams, um, when well, maybe they were a little bit. Um, uh, you know, smaller in nature. You know, even UTEP did a lot of twisting, a lot of movement at the line of scrimmage, a lot of, a lot of games. And, and um, uh, you know, for, for us, uh, maybe we had not seen enough of that during practice to block it up efficiently. It was so easy to point out what we failed to do, why we failed to do it, and the results were pretty clear. That, that's what's – it's so easy to – to, to, to pinpoint why we have success, but also why we have failure. And until we learn through and through that when we do those things, we will not have success, um, that's the only time it can happen. So the Hogs have been held in check on the ground through two games, very unlike them. They're averaging five yards a carry, fewer than they were at this time last season. Arkansas's rushed for 285 total yards in two games. You want some context against non-conference opponents last year? That number was up over 320 a game. So all kinds of difference there. We knew Jonathan Williams, guys, going into the season wasn't going to be a part of it. We just thought they were so deep that it wouldn't necessarily matter. Clint, you live there. You follow this team. You see them closely. Well, you, Why can't they run the ball? You hit the nail on the head, man. I mean, Jonathan Williams, we, we didn't place enough value on that when it happened. Arkansas didn't as a program. Yeah. We didn't here at SEC Network. But losing him ha has clearly hurt this football team. Secondly, I think one thing going into this season, I think Arkansas had to find a passing game. They needed to develop a passing game. Brandon Allen and his receivers had to stand up and play better this year for Arkansas to have a chance to win the West.
They but, have. But most most importantly, that yeah, they have they have to this point, but most importantly, shuffling this offensive line up front, taking Denver Kirkland from guard, moved him to left tackle. That takes Dan Skipper, moves him from left tackle to right tackle. So now you've shuffled, shuffled guys around to hopefully create a more cohesive, uh, more effective unit. But essentially, it seems after two games, Marcus, that they've, made, they've created more problems for themselves. Because now your left guard's not playing as, as well. Uh, your left tackle's not playing as well as you expected. Your right tackle is, is still uh, a problem, still an issue. You've got some new starters up front in the middle. Tritola is really the only one playing up to par right now. When you reshuffle offensive line, it's a totally different game. I remember going from left end to right end in the NFL. It was a totally different game for me. And, and sometimes guys are built for certain positions. To me, Denver Kirkland is a surefire guard on this level and the next level. He, I, don't, I don't think he has that functional movement that you need as a tackle in this day and age going against guys that's 245 to 50 pounds running four fours coming off the edge. I think that hurts him. But more than anything, Arkansas is a running football team. And they have to figure out a way. I don't care if they twisting. I don't care if it's nine in the box. For the last two to three years, your program has been built on being able to run the football. Brandon Allen throwing 53 times, for me, that's a problem. When you think about what Brett Bielema has done with this program, mm -hmm. run the football, let play action come off of it. That identity that they showed against Toledo, and maybe because they were twisting and stunned, they felt like they had to get away from the game, that's not your personnel. That, that's not how your football team is built to win football games at this juncture. Well, that's what's the most disappointing thing with Arkansas right now about this last loss, is it wasn't just a loss and a dis you didn't show up, you didn't give effort. All that's true, but that's not necessarily the case. They're getting beat in the trenches. And that is where, you, like you said, that is where you win football in Against the SEC. Against a MAC team. That seems Absolutely. ridiculous. I, Absolutely. You know, it doesn't I'm not seem saying ridiculous. it's not right. It just seems ridiculous. It, it doesn't seem ridiculous. It, it's come out of uh, Brett Bielema's yeah. mouth. It, it's embarrassing. Yeah. And, and that's what's so surprising. On both sides of the football, too, let's not hang this all on the offensive line. On the defensive line, they're struggling as well, too, to, to make noise. No Hatcher for four, six weeks, maybe a little bit beyond that. How does that – because we've seen – the passing game is improved. They're clearly sure. trying to do It's a very conscious thing. You see it every game. How does this impact that now? Well, it, it de definitely a step backwards because now you've got to figure out who your go-to guy is. And, and they were still trying to figure out if Hatcher was, was the guy that in this conference could, could, do, could make plays in the passing game out wide. Now you're minus him and you got to figure out who your number one is all over again. Number two is important. Number three is important. So this is just a trickle down effect and it's going to hurt Arkansas. But at the end of the day, Marcus, this is going to force them to get back to what? Mm, running running the, the football, football, like you said. The most de de dejecting thing for me is that Arkansas has lost a little bit of that identity. And look, you will improve passing when you throw 30 more times than you've thrown the last three <laughs> years in the course of a football game. Right. That's my biggest issue right now is that they need to get back to what their identity is and begin to let Brandon Allen be a quarterback off of the play action where he thrived last year. He didn't put up gaudy numbers. He threw 20 touchdowns to five interceptions. That's winning football. That's why we were high on Arkansas preseason yeah. because of that identity to be able to roll great people and control tempo of a football game. Now you throw the football, you lose possessions, and you give other teams more chances to score. So in turn, the defense looks bad. Offensive numbers passing look better, but it doesn't equate to winning football games because your identity is built on road grading people. Yeah. Get back to it, Hawks. Before conference play, preferably. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Peter. Of course, you see the Razorbacks there on the outside. We're going to start with Arkansas. We're going to play a little contender, pretender when it comes to making it to the college football playoffs. So, guys, let's head this Dad, way. Dad, you don't want to hold the sign in front of you and let him hit yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, who <laughs> wants good. to hold mint the sign? Mint work, okay. exactly. Just a mint work. <laughs> so, the Razorbacks, are they a contender or pretender? David, I'm going to start with you. Toledo. That's okay. all you got to say. All right. Exactly. I'm Done. guessing that's pretender. That was, you We're going to move on to, to Toledo last definitely, week. Yeah. <laughs> definitely a, a pretender. Coming into the season, you thought they would be a contender, but uh, after last week, losing to Toledo? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's rough. Yes, all right, that's uh, pretender. So, Deontay, you don't even have to vote on this one. They already went pretender. There's no way you're going contender, Almost right? Almost definitely. I'm going with the guys. We'll see if you can hit it, though. All right, now. Right. Knock that one out. Where are my gloves? Do I need gloves? I don't need gloves. Hey, he got a fight. Oh! <laughs> 
Missouri and UConn. That's coming up after us. We'll get you ready for that. And then Florida and Kentucky. The Gators have won 28 in a row against the Cats. Yeah, I think the Arkansas-Texas Tech game is interesting after Arkansas embarrassing themselves last week against Toledo and then Florida and Kentucky. By the way, why is Arkansas throwing the ball more than it's running? Why? <laughs> I bet they don't today. That, that would no. be my guess. Okay. So you see that some of the SEC teams have some games that they should walk over. We saw how that went last week. Lee, as you look at this, we're going to start to establish some pecking order, particularly in the SEC West. I'm looking forward to watching the SEC West play today, where four of the top 18 teams play each other. Last week, now the impact on this week. You know what happened to Auburn. Everybody was sitting back for about 59 minutes saying, this can't really be happening. Oh, it really happened. They had to go to overtime to beat Jacksonville State. And then Tennessee, blowing its largest home lead in school history. Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield was absolutely sensational in the fourth quarter in overtime as they knocked off the balls in Neyland. And then the most shocking result of the week, Arkansas in Little Rock. How about we don't play in Little Rock anymore? How about we just start with that? No more. No Losing more. to Toledo. So now, the mighty FPI, the Football Power Index, and the chances to win the SEC West has Ole Miss as the number one team in the country after two weeks. FBI gives Ole Miss a 49% chance to win the West. LSU, second favorite to win the West, according to FBI. Then Texas A&M and Bama. All right, biggest concern now with the SEC team. Well, first of all, everybody just has to chill out. Because it's never as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. But the biggest concern for me is the quarterback play in the SEC. And then, what will Arkansas look like against that passing attack of Texas Tech? Razorback Stadium, not War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, where they have lost five of their last six. Back at home in Fayetteville. Hopefully they'll be running the ball there. Shannon Spake with Big Brett. Thank you very much. You know, Coach, I know this week you've held your players accountable for the Toledo game. How do you expect them to respond when they hit the field on Saturday? Well, first as players and coaches. Uh, start with myself. I know we could have done a better job last week, especially getting our guys ready and maybe during the course of the game. But uh, it's a learning experience. Unfortunately, sometimes you got to go through those. I think our kids since Sunday have been uh, lights out. Tuesday was a great practice. Wednesday was better. Uh, Thursday was a nice shine and polish. So uh, to get to game day, there should be no team in the country that wants to get out there and play more than us. You know, 720 yards of offense in the air. It's not exactly what you think of from a Brett Bielema run offense. What do you want the identity of this team to be moving forward? Well, I want it to be the identity of a winner. Uh, that's for sure. I think the, the thing that we got excited about was uh, more than any time since I've been here, we've been able to throw the ball, partly because of B.A., but a lot of good players around them. And we just we can't lose the identity, especially a game like this, Texas Tech, where you can maybe keep it on the ground. We want to try to pound out the time and, uh, you know, keep their offense off the field. So uh, I think it's been a great wake-up call for our, our team in general. We've shared a lot of stories and a lot of motivation. I think we'll be ready to roll. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. And I want to throw out some numbers here that are just so un-Arkansas. How about the fact that 63% of their plays last week were pass plays in that upset? The Razorbacks have passed on 53% of their overall plays. That's fourth most in the SEC, 13 percentage points higher than a year ago. That does not sound like Arkansas at all. And Brandon Allen has 300-yard passing games, but then that loss. No, they definitely have to get back to the basics. But they also have to be able to convert in the red zone, and they have to have situational awareness. It's something that we always talk about as quarterbacks, but Brandon Allen in this offense, you have to have situational awareness. Here is fourth and goal. You have to give your receiver a chance to touch the ball. Give him a chance. It's fourth and goal. It doesn't matter if you throw a pick. Give him a shot. And he didn't give his receiver a shot, and because of that, they weren't able to convert. Maybe he's got big, some big-time receivers. Give them a chance now here with five seconds to go give someone a chance to make a play and he overshoots it at least give your receiver a chance to put his hands on the ball Greg we've been in this situation many times and you know what sometimes you just have to force it sometimes you have to stick it in there and here with one second to go on the clock he scrambles he buys himself some time Still too high. Still too high. Give him a chance, Tim. You have to give him a chance. And this is a kid that I, has played some really good games. 
He has a lot of talent. He's made some really good throws. But in those situations, you have to know what to do with the football and where to go. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to force it. And there, you know, this, a lot of people wondering, why is yeah. Arkansas throwing the football so I'm much? wondering, Greg. I'm wondering, too. Because when you look at what they did well last year, guys, teams were tired in the fourth quarter when they were playing Arkansas because they leaned on them. That big offensive line imposed their will for the first 45 minutes of the game. This year, they've come out throwing the football trying to get Brandon Allen into a rhythm because when they play Alabama, when they play Ole Miss, when they play LSU, they're going to need that passing game to be clicking, but they can't get away from who they are. They reshuffled that offensive line, and I think it's cost them a little bit in their efficiency running the football. And Texas Tech is exactly what you expect them to be. They've been throwing the ball well with Patrick Mahomes, who's had four touchdowns and 300-yard passing games now <laughs> in at least five straight games. He's reached that threshold statistically. Patrick Mahomes, we mentioned him for Texas Tech, second in the country in passing and passing touchdowns. Seven, but their two best are their two ends, defensive ends, both pass rusher, run stoppers, and they're going to be integral to be strong on the edge of their defense tonight. Taylor Simak is set to kick it off. Raleigh Williams, the true freshman, and JoJo Robinson are back deep to receive for the Hogs. Coming off of a loss to Toledo. That was embarrassing to this program. Arkansas try to bounce back. And for Texas Tech, their true first test of the season as Robinson will take a knee. Screen to the near side. Reginald Davis, skip arm, pylon, touchdown. He has got to carry some of that load as well tonight. Play action. Allen rolls out to the sideline. Diving catch is made by JoJo Robinson for a first down. A delayed handoff, and it's Alex Collins. Breaking free. He's got a first down. He picks up 12. Extra possession or two for this Red Raider offense. Quarterback draw on second down. Mahomes, nowhere to go. Bottled up behind the line and lost about a yard and a half. It will be third down and long. Three-man rush. Mahomes throws it up for grabs down the sideline. And that's intercepted right back. DJ Dean inside the 40-yard line of Arkansas. You could get away with this against inferior competition. This is a well-coached Arkansas team. You see Dean, he's made a lot of starts. The junior gets his eyes around, and he goes up and acts as the receiver and catches it at the high point. And Robinson in motion. A four-man rush again. So Allen has a pocket to throw from. A bobbled catch made by Jared Cornelius down the sideline. Well, it's not only their first third down conversion, it's a big play to the 21-yard line. Alex Collins with a cutback inside the 15, inside the 10, down to the 7-yard line where it will be first and goal. Collins on third down, into the end zone for the Razorback touchdown. by Alex Collins. We're tied at seven. Old finish between Miami and Nebraska. The Kings somehow survived. Allen to throw, wants a screen, sets it up for the freshman, Raleigh Williams. Blockers out in front, moves the pile, and picks up a first down. But the injuries piling up at the wide receiver spot as well for Arkansas. Here's Collins back in the game, on a cutback. A first down and more. Inside the 20-yard line. When you get runs like that, you can use your backup receivers, and you'll be just fine. Play action on second down and goal. Allen flips it to a wide-open Hunter Henry, and he walks into the end zone for the touchdown. Perfectly executed by the Hogs. We're now tied at 14 as Hunter Henry scores for the first time tonight. to deal with all that crowd noise playing right up against that Arkansas student section. That student section's quiet after they watch this. And back to the more deliberate ground attack. That begins with Raleigh Williams up the middle. 
Close to the 35-yard line, a gain of eight. Alex Collins back in a tailback. He's there for the play-action fake. And it's Kendrick Edwards there for the throw from Brandon Allen. Raleigh Williams is the eye back. Delayed handoff to Williams. He's got a gaping hole. Breaks a tackle. Down the sideline goes Raleigh Williams to the 10 yard line. Delayed handoff to Raleigh Williams. Inside the 30. Spins close to the first down. Brought down a yard shot. Play action. Allen looking for the end zone on the post. It's perfectly thrown to Drew Morgan for the touchdown. Yeah, it was a post, but even better, he faked to the corner, did Drew Morgan. He set that route up beautifully, and look when the ball's out of the hands. Not bad, good execution. Third down and five with no timeouts. Mahomes wants the deep ball for Sadler. Intercepted. Start of the third quarter between Texas Tech and Arkansas. We are tied at 21. Play action fake, the screen set up. DeAndre Washington this time a negative play. Right in front of Cliff Kingsbury for Texas Tech. On that touchdown drive, that one from third down and a yard away to put the Red Raiders on top. He'll go play action here. Long throw to the sideline, and he finds Kendrick Edwards. Knuckleball, but it's good. Texas Tech, though, gets a stop defensively in the red zone, and they hold on to the lead. Justin Stockton, right up the middle with a burst. Touchdown. In the left flat, it's Jeremy Sprinkle. He's got a first down. Collins makes a man miss at the line and drives the pile. That looks to be good for 11 yards and a first down. Play action for Brandon Allen. Wide open, it's Hunter Henry. Collins breaks a tackle into the secondary. Alex Collins into the red zone. All the way down to the 13-yard line. 26 more. And Alex Collins makes a miss, and he makes a miss at full speed, and he does the same once again to Keenan Ward on the back end. They were the better team tonight, period. And the best player on the field tonight just took a knee. Patrick Mahomes with what amounts to a flawless second half. And Texas Tech pulls off the upset, and they take down the Razorbacks here in Fayetteville. 35-24. Good luck. Cliff Kingsbury and Texas Tech last season had only the second sub-500 year in the last 22 years in Lubbock. And now they bounce back to win their first three this year, including a road win at an SEC stadium. The first time they've been in an SEC visiting stadium since 2003. And the first time in 25 years they've come to Fayetteville. And they'll ride back to Lubbock with a win.